Okay, in this lesson, we're going to demonstrate the difference between a prime number and a composite number. A prime number is simply a number with exactly two factors, and those factors will always be 1 and the number itself. On the screen, I have the first prime numbers listed all the way through the number 100 and a little bit over 100. The only factors of all the numbers listed are 1 and the number itself. 2 is the only even prime number in existence. 3 is a prime number because you can only multiply 1 times 3 to produce 3. Same thing with 5, 7, 11, and 13, as well as the rest of the numbers upon the screen. A composite number is simply a number that is created by making multiples of prime numbers. For example, 6 is a composite number because not only can you multiply 1 times itself to produce 6, you can also multiply 2 times 3 to produce 6. And notice that 2 is a prime number and 3 is a prime number. So with composite numbers, you have a combination of ways that you can produce that number. Not only one times itself, but also another number times another number. And what's interesting about composite numbers is all composite numbers can be broken down into all prime factors. And that's one thing we are going to show in this lesson is how to break any composite number down into all prime numbers. So let's do exactly that. Let's start by taking the number 64 and breaking it down into all prime numbers. Now the process of breaking a composite number into all prime numbers is called prime factorization. A lot of people know this process is simply creating a factor tree because what we do is we branch out from each number and break it down into smaller elements. So we're going to start with two numbers that we can multiply to make 64, and one thing that comes to mind is 8 times 8. Now when you are breaking down your numbers, if you get a prime number, you should circle that prime number immediately, but 8 and 8 are both composite numbers, so we can break those down even further. 8 may be broken down into 2 times 4, and we can circle the number 2 because it is a prime number. And over here, we still have to break down this 8. We can do that by multiplying 2 by 4, and we can circle this 2. But the 4 on each side is composite, and we can branch out from that and break that down even further. To get 4, we may multiply 2 times 2, and we can circle both of those 2's because they are prime numbers. And we may break down this 4 by multiplying 2 by 2 as well. And when you have all prime numbers circled at the bottom, you may stop. Now at this point, we can express our answer a couple of different ways. We have six twos that we circled, so we may write two times two times two times two times two times two as our answer, or we may write this in exponential notation, which would be two to the sixth power. We would say that two to the sixth power is the prime factorization, of 64. Now let's try another example. Let's say we have the number 240 and we want to break that number down into all prime factors. 240 is a composite number and we're going to take this composite number and start by multiplying two numbers that produce 240. Because 240 ends in a zero, we should recognize that we may multiply 10 by 24. 24 is still a composite number, so we may break that down even further. One thing that comes to mind is 3 times 8. 3 is a prime number, so we may circle that. 8 can be broken down further into 2 times 4. 2 is a prime number, so we can circle that. 4 is composite, so we can break that down into the numbers 2 times 2. And now we have to go back up to the composite number of 10 and break that down. 2 times 5 produces 10. And 2 and 5 are both prime numbers. So we have reached the end of our factor tree. So what we're going to do is list the numbers in order from smallest to greatest. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 twos.
and we have a single 3 and a single 5. Now we can express this in exponential notation. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 may be expressed as 2 to the 4th power. And because we only have one 3, we just write a single 3 and a single 5. So 2 to the 4th power times 3 times 5 is the prime factorization of 240. Now what we're going to do next is demonstrate how we can take any two numbers and make prime factorizations of both of those numbers and use the results to actually find the greatest common factor of those two numbers as well as the least common multiple. So let's say we want to find the GCF and the LCM of the two numbers 80 and 200. The first thing that you would do is just complete a factor tree of each one of the numbers. So let's start with 80. The most obvious factor pair that will work for 80 in the minds of most people would be 8 times 10. 8 may be broken down into 2 times 4. We may circle the 2 because that's prime. This 4 may be broken down further into the prime numbers of 2 times 2. and 10 may be broken down into the prime numbers 2 and 5. And moving right along to the number 200. 200 may be broken down into the numbers 10 times 20. 10 may be broken down into the prime numbers of 2 times 5. For 20, we may break that down into the numbers 4 times 5. We may circle the 5 because that is prime. And 4 must be broken down into its prime elements of 2 times 2. Now, once you have reached the end of both factor trees, what you do is you look at all the numbers that you circled, or all the prime numbers at the bottom. What you want to do is select a prime number at the bottom on the left hand side of your factor tree and see if there is an identical prime number on the other side of your factor tree. So what you're basically doing is trying to pair up identical numbers. For example, there is a 2 on this side and there is a 2 on this side to pair up with. So you are just seeing how many matches you have, one on the left and one on the right. Well, we have another 2 over here as well as a 2 over here. We have another 2 over here and another 2 over here. We have another 2 over here, but we do not have a fourth 2 to pair up with, so we do not shade that one. And we have a 5 over here, as well as a 5 over here. On the right hand side, we have another 5, but we do not have one on the left to shade, so we have to leave that extra 5 unshaded. Now, once you have identified what all of the common prime factors are between 80 and 200, what you do is you just take one side of the factors you shaded and list those factors. We have three twos that we shaded along with a five and you multiply those numbers together and the result will actually be the greatest common factor of 80 and 200. So if we multiply two times two, that will give us four. And if we multiply 2 times 5, that will give us 10. And multiplying 4 times 10, that will give us the greatest common factor of 40. And it didn't matter what side you multiplied the shaded numbers with. You could have done that with the numbers on the left or the right because they are identical. Now to find the least common multiple. To find the least common multiple of 80 and 200, what you do is you take the prime numbers that were not shaded, or the leftovers, on one side of your factor tree. So on the side of 80, we have a 2 that was left unshaded. And you take that unshaded prime number, and you multiply it by the top of your other factor tree. So if we multiply 2 by 200, that is going to equal 400. 
So the LCM of 80 and 200 is equal to 400. And if we wish, we can take the unshaded prime number of the other factor tree, which is 5, and do the same thing. We can multiply 5 by the top of the other factor tree, in this case 80. And 80 times 5 is also equal to 400. So what we should understand from this lesson is that you can take any composite number and break them down into all prime numbers. And then you can take any two composite numbers and perform a factor tree of each one of those numbers and use the prime numbers at the bottom to find not only the greatest common factor, but the least common multiple as well.